from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. It's 6.30. The Elmo Fire in Flathead County is growing fast. The latest from the scene where homes have been lost and people remain evacuated is coming up in just one minute. Also ahead, a small grass fire in Bozeman shows the danger of wildfire at this time of year, where it happened and what firefighters are saying about it. We talked about that yesterday, a red flag warning for uh, most of Southwest Montana expired at 9 o'clock last night. High temperatures, low humidities, windy conditions, yeah. all of that. Uh, uh, we're fortunate we didn't have more fire starts right. out there because it was just right for that. Good news is today the winds have tapered off. Uh, temperatures are going to be dropping down. I can't do anything about the humidity in that until tomorrow when it starts mm -hmm. to rain. Good rain. Humidity That's what we need. Yeah, is how about some rain. That? Yeah, we're. It, Sadly, it's only going to last for a short period of time, but we are going to get some break from what Good. we've been dealing with here this week. Well, we have a break in it right now. Beautiful morning out there. Cloudy skies for the most part around southwest Montana. Temperatures in the 50s and some low 60s. Whitehall at 63, Dillon at 58, 52 down in West Yellowstone right now. 60, and I don't get to say this very often, the winds are blowing out of the north at three miles per hour is all in Livingston. I want to share that because usually it's, you know, so windy over there. Uh, Ennis, by the way, 56 and calm. I don't get to do that one very often either, so we're going to do that. Uh, temperatures today warming up into the low 80s under cloudy skies for the Bozeman area. There is a chance of a shower this afternoon as well. Better chance tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. For Butte, upper 70s today with a slight chance of a shower under cloudy skies and then another chance uh, tomorrow. More to follow on that. Judy coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Chet. The Elmo Fire west of Flathead Lake continues to grow to the north and the east. The fire has now grown to more than 20,000 acres and is on the verge of reaching Lake Mary Ronan. It's currently 6% contained. The last estimate fire officials gave reported that at least eight structures, five of them homes, have been lost to the flames. Evacuation orders continue for all people living north and south of Highway 352, Lake Mary R Ronan Road, and all people living along the lake. That means 150 people remain evacuated and at least 100 people remain under pre-evacuation notice. Red Cross evacuation centers are open for those fleeing the fire. 375 people are fighting the blaze, including the Helena Hotshots. A public meeting will be held tonight at the Elmo Powwow grounds at 7 p.m. The Elmo fire was reported last Friday afternoon. Its cause is still under investigation. MTN's Sean Wells spent the day in and around the area yesterday and has the story of one of the evacuees, a Dayton postal worker who hasn't missed a day of work since being evacuated. As the Elmo fire continues to bring so much uncertainty, one act of normal day-to-day -day life remains constant in the small community of Dayton, as Postal Service Clerk Caitlin Hadeen shows up every day to make sure her friends, family, and neighbors receive their mail. It's definitely an important job. I'm just doing what I can. Caitlin and her team of four workers deliver mail to the small community of Dayton and the surrounding areas. She's been keeping a watchful eye on mail and packages for everyone under evacuation. Anybody can pick up at any time when the window is open. So 8 to noon, Monday through Friday. Saturday, I'm open from 8 to 9.45. Caitlin lives up the road from Dayton in the small community of Proctor. The fire is especially hitting close to home as she's been evacuated since Monday and doesn't know if her house is still standing. That's the hardest part with being evacuated is we have no idea what the state of our home is. You know, they say, oh, the fire's reached about here, but you have no idea if it's touched your house or not. Caitlin has lived in Proctor for the last 12 years. She and her fiance Brendan are now staying at a family friend's property in Lakeside as they patiently wait. It's so unpredictable. It's got everyone on pins and needles. Caitlin describes Monday's evacuation as frantic, grabbing everything she could on autopilot. We just packed everything and left. I grabbed everything for my wedding, except for my wedding dress. And then it kind of died down the next day, so my husband was able to go back in there and grab my wedding dress. But uh, as of now, we've got everything that we absolutely need out of there and then some. Caitlin and Brendan are set to get married at the end of the month. Up at Mountain Meadows, up at Lake Mary Renan. So we've got to find a different spot to go. Caitlin says she's proud of the way her small community takes care of one another. She'll keep doing her job at the post office with a smile and a helping hand for those who need it. We'll all make it through. We always do. Especially as a community, as a one giant family. We take care of each other. In Dayton, Sean Wells, MTN News.
Where there's fire, there is often an abundance of smoke. The hazards from wildfires extend beyond the burning embers and charred ground. Wildfire smoke can affect everyone and the long-term health implications are not fully known. Dr. Ted Myatt, a senior environmental scientist with Environmental Health and Engineering Incorporated, explains the first method in protecting your home is sealing. Wildfire smoke particulates are much smaller than other particulates and can easily find their way into your home. Given the increasing amount of smoky days, Myatt recommends investing in an air purifier. So first and foremost, you want to get one that's a HEPA air purifier. HEPA filters remove 99.97% of particles down to 0.3 microns. And so 0.3 to 2.5 microns is really the size of of particles that we're talking about. The size of the wildfire smoke particles can actually lead to them being more harmful and impacting more of the population than other particulates. You know, there's obviously particles in the air from other combustion sources, from power plants, from car exhaust, all that sort of stuff, right? So wildfire particulate is actually much more uh, toxic, a much greater irritant um, causes worse health effects than, than other sorts of particulates. Dr. Myatt also recommends keeping track of air quality and setting your air conditioner to recirculate on poor air quality days. For more tips on smoke proofing your home, head on over to our website. In Great Falls, Eric Johnson, MTN News. Well, there was a small grass fire on Fowler Lane in Bozeman yesterday. MTN's Jolie Solis spoke with fire officials to find out what caused the fire and what homeowners should do to protect their property in this dry, windy weather. Highlight Fire Chief Chris Dahlhauser said Gallatin Gateway, Bozeman Fire, Central Valley, and Fort Ellis Fire Departments all responded to the fire here on Fowler Lane. Highlight was quickly able to contain it by themselves. Dahlhauser said even though the fire was smaller, you can never be too careful, especially right now. We're in grass fire season, uh, and we take that very, very seriously. When we get fire in the, the grass and we get wind behind it, it moves very, very quickly. So we want to throw as many resources as we can possibly get um, to make sure that we knock it out as quickly as possible. The property owner was unable to speak to us, but according to Dollhouser, the fire of about one acre was a result of a small brush pile that the property owner was burning about one week ago when Bozeman was not under a burn ban. Dollhouser also said the owner has been very diligent about checking the brush pile and making sure it was under control. And he was doing a phenomenal job. Dollhouser said there had been no smokes or sign of heat coming off of the brush pile for the last week, but today the conditions were just right and a fire sparked up. And with the amount of heat we've had and then this wind today, uh, it actually must have had a hot spot in it and it started up again and got into the grass and away we went. Dollhouser said Bozeman is under a red flag warning and all outside burning has been closed. He recommends property owners have greenery at least 50 feet around their home and to mow down dead grass. This will cause a grass fire to slow down and give firefighters a chance to contain it. For any homeowners, for anybody living in the district, just be very, very thoughtful about what you're doing and how you're doing it um, just to try to prevent any grass fires from starting. In Bozeman, I'm Jolie Salee, MTN News. Car vandalism, vandalism is nothing new, but bear in mind, we're about to show you something you don't see every day. It's a brown bear breaking into a Red Lodge vehicle during the night and absolutely destroying it. MTN's Haley Monaco has the story on how it all played out. It's not too rare to see a bear when you're near Red Lodge, but what is uncommon is for a bear to open your car door and climb into it. But that happened to one couple Monday night. Well, it was there from about 11. A little after 11 so, at night till almost 7 o'clock in the morning. After eight straight hours in a car, even the best of us get a little cranky, so it shouldn't be a huge shock. Every once in a while you'd hear a crunch. That the passenger who ended up in the Pilates vehicle Monday night was more than eager to get out. I thought maybe it had a garbage can it was chomping on or something, but... Uh, it was my car, it was crunching yeah. up. Yes, a bear somehow ended up in the family's car, shut the door, and couldn't get out. Mike and Maria figured it out when their car lights started flashing and the alarm went off. We called the uh, sheriff's department, said there's a bear breaking in our car. 
Fish, wildlife, and parks promised to check it out in the morning, not realizing the bear was trapped. And after a restless night's sleep, Mike decided to take matters into his own hands. Yes, that's him, carefully opening up the car door the next morning with a stick. I reached through that side door there and yeah. reached out and popped the door of the car and the bear come roaring out of there. Yeah. It turns out the mom's two cubs were close by hanging out in a tree. Once mom found them, the trio took off, but not before she left behind a mess. And we are so surprised, very uh, surprised that we saw the car is totally wrecked. We can't it's, believe. It's total. A shattered windshield, destroyed roof and passenger door, and a chewed up dashboard is just some of the damage. But their first thought when they opened their now totaled vehicle was not about the destruction left behind. Instead, they were hit with something else. The oh. odor. Odor. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, yes. Bears are stinky creatures. Yeah. The Pilates are adamant they didn't have any food in their vehicle and think the bear was just so used to opening car doors to try to find food that it got lucky when it stumbled upon their unlocked car door. A nightmare experience, but one this couple is somehow able to laugh about. It's a Sioux bear Now we call that Sioux bear <laughs> <laughs> In Red Lodge, Haley Monaco, MTN News.